back with you once again, and I wanted to talk today a little bit about one of the real hot-button topics, it seems like, that has come up in the last couple of weeks here in America, that being the uh, Trayvon Martin incident down in Florida, down, I guess, Sanford, Florida, where uh, Trayvon Martin was killed, and there's a lot of uh, controversy over exactly how that happened and why that happened and uh, protests taking place and uh, public figures speaking out against it and on it and so forth, so I wanted to put my two cents in about it. But I wanted to do it a little bit differently today in that I did not want to spend a great deal of time talking about the specifics of the incident. Instead, I wanted to spend most of our time here talking about how a number of people have reacted to it, particularly the American left, and talking about how the left seems to be using this incident as a mechanism to attack certain types of legislation that uh, have been enacted in Florida and across the nation in various states. Uh, that helps protect property owners and homeowners. So I will talk about that momentarily. Uh, I will say this much on the specific incident at hand. Uh, unlike most Americans, I personally do not feel right now at this point that I know enough facts about the situation or that I've been exposed to enough concrete facts to decide whether this Zimmerman guy uh, is guilty or not. Uh, Zimmerman being the guy who uh, was the killer of Trayvon Martin, and he claims he did it in self-defense. Uh, he was a, a neighborhood watch captain and was on his rounds one night. Uh, he's claiming it was self-defense. Uh, those who are on uh, Trayvon Martin's side in this are saying it wasn't. And there's all sorts of conflicting reports going back and forth uh, about specifically the altercation that took place. There's some people saying that Zimmerman was chasing him down the street, uh, which certainly does not make him look any better. Uh, there are other reports out there that uh, that, that Martin was on top of Zimmerman pounding him, and, and I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not saying that's true. I'm not saying any of this is true. Right now, everything out there is essentially hearsay. Nobody has any concrete facts about any of this, and it seems like there's just as much evidence uh, on one side of this as there is the other. Now, I'm sure over the next few weeks and months, we're going to get to a point where the facts will come out, but we are not there yet. Uh, like I say, Zimmerman claims it was self-defense and uh, that this uh, uh, Trayvon Martin uh, was wearing a hoodie and had it pulled up and had his hand in his waistband. Uh, and so certainly, if that's the case, I can see a situation where uh, even if, if Martin was no threat, that you could perceive him as a threat and you'd have to act. I, I, again, that's his side of the story. I don't know how true it is. We're going to find all of that out in the next few weeks. And, and so I'm willing to reserve my judgment until then. It seems like there's a lot of other people out there who are making a judgment right away and claiming that they know what happened or, or assuming they know what happened when really they don't. Particularly, you've seen a lot of the left-wing news organizations take a hold of this and really try to paint this as a situation of violent racial crime. And again, I'm not discounting that it could potentially be that, but we don't know it yet. So I'm going to reserve my uh, judgment on that until that time. I will say this much, however. If it ends up being true that this Zimmerman guy uh, did kill Trayvon Martin in cold blood, where uh, it was intentional on his behalf and it really wasn't self-defense, then you know what? In that case, I say that Zimmerman should be uh, convicted to the fullest extent of the law. I say fry him in that case. I think he should be executed if, that, if that's what happened. Uh, so I am certainly open to the possibilities that the left are throwing up there. Uh, but what I'm saying is that I don't have enough information yet to just flat out accept their characterization of this incident as it stands right now. So what I wanted to focus on today was some of the laws that the left is trying to use this situation to try and strike down. A uh, couple of laws out there uh, in Florida, there's something called the Stand Your Ground Law, uh, which is what they are affirming that Zimmerman used in order to commit this act. The stand your ground law, and I'm going, to, I'm going to discuss this in layman's terms because I'm certainly not an attorney of any sort. In layman's terms, the stand your ground law is a law under which a person uh, who reasonably believes that uh, they are in physical danger can use deadly force without retreat and claim self-defense. Okay, that sounds very sensible to me. It sounds like one of those laws that uh, is, is almost so obvious that it doesn't need to be in the books, but... I guess with all the litigious nature of society and with how, how we've really been over backwards, it seems like, to give criminals their rights over the last century, maybe a law like that really does need to be in the books. Uh, but there are a lot of leftists criticizing stand-your-ground laws and also criticizing something called uh, 
Castle Doctrine Law, which is uh, something that we have in a lot of other states in the Union, including, including right here in Missouri. Uh, Castle Doctrine is essentially a, a situation where a person has the right to defend him or herself if someone breaks into their home. And uh, if that happens, the, the homeowner can assume the intruder is breaking in to do bodily harm. They don't have to prove that. You just have to assume it. And then that justifies the homeowners using lethal force uh, in that case. Uh, minor difference between the laws is that a castle law applies pretty much to your home. Stand your ground applies to your vehicle or uh, anywhere where you feel threatened. You don't have to ascertain necessarily that the person specifically is a threat because in that situation, you would not legitimately have time to do so. Uh, it's going to be a quick judgment. And so it, it's designed to be a law that's on the side of, of the person protecting their property. So in that sense, uh, both stand your ground laws and castle doctrine law seem very logical to me. It sounds like good legislation. Seems like solid laws that take some of the advantage in, in our society away from the criminal element. So in that respect, uh, I think both of those types of legislation are positive things and things that we need to see more of. However, many on the left, not only uh, politicians, but commentators, Ed Schultz has been talking about this a lot in his show in the last week or so. Many on the left are using this incident to illustrate that, hey, if you have stand your ground laws or you have castle doctrine law in your state, well, you might have an innocent person get killed at some point. Well, that's not anything, that possibility is not anything to uh, to take lightly. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, and while it's very tragic to think of an innocent life being lost, which might have happened here in this Trayvon Martin case, while it's very tragic to think of that, difficult to think of that, and it's very difficult to then try and weigh the potential of that loss and the cost of a human life versus the potential costs of not having such laws, and while some might find such a comparison to be uh, somewhat cruel or somewhat heartless, I've got to tell you that whenever we analyze any type of law, the only real way you can analyze it is to compare the costs of having the law and the risks of having that law versus the costs and the risks of not having the law. And while I know it makes some people a little bit uncomfortable to approach it that way, if this discussion is going to turn to the validity of stand your ground laws and castle doctrine law, then I think it's a comparison that as difficult as it might be a comparison we have to make. So let's go ahead and make that comparison. Let's go ahead and run that cost-benefit analysis, if you will, of whether the possibility of an innocent life being taken in a rare case, possibly in the case of Trayvon Martin, whether that offsets the positives that come about by stand your ground laws and castle doctrine law. I want you to, to keep in mind the following statistics. These uh, stats come from the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And let's use these stats to kind of set our playing field here. Did you know that in America, one property crime happens every three seconds? One burglary occurs every 10 seconds. One violent crime occurs every 20 seconds. One aggravated assault occurs every 35 seconds. One robbery occurs every 60 seconds. One forcible rape occurs every two minutes. There were over two million burglaries back in, in 2005. So when you weigh those facts and you see how pervasive property crime is and even crime against, uh, pr crime against your person with murders and rapes and so forth, when you set all of that on one side of the scale and you compare it, to the possibility that if stand your ground laws, castle doctrine law, and, and other types of, of uh, permissive gun laws are in effect, you weigh it against the possibility that under those laws, somebody might occasionally get killed who shouldn't get killed once in a while. While it's going to make some people very uncomfortable for me to say this, and while some people are going to get madder than hell at me for saying this, I think that is a sacrifice that we should be willing to make. I am willing to accept the possibility that on occasion an innocent life might be lost if accepting that then prevents many more innocent lives from being lost with such laws, if it prevents much more property from being taken and stolen under those laws. And I know that's very uncomfortable.
for some people to think of. But quite frankly, in order for us to make any headway in this society on those criminals, not saying Trayvon Martin is a criminal. I don't know that. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But in order to make any headway on those criminals out there in society who would invade our homes and attack us and steal from us, in order to make any headway on them, those people, we must make those criminals feel as uncomfortable when entering our neighborhoods as we feel when we go into their neighborhoods. That's the only way this is going to get taken care of. If you want a less violent society, then you must start focusing on those who attack property owners, not those who are defending themselves. Now, incidentally, keep in mind, I'm not saying which of those two groups that the Zimmerman fellow falls into. I don't know that yet, and neither do you. But these laws, Castle Doctrine Law, Stand Your Ground Laws, they are designed to assist property owners in defending themselves and their property. And that consideration should always be the top priority in all of our legislation. That should be the first priority at all times, even above the possibility that an occasional innocent life might be lost. So there's my stand on it in terms of how the left are taking this Trayvon Martin situation and trying to use it to attack what I consider very common sense and logical laws that need to be on the books in terms of defending ourselves. Now in terms of Zimmerman, if he overstepped his bounds, if he overstepped the law and he killed this Martin in cold blood, I say he should fry. You guys know my opinion on the death penalty, that I believe any, any murder that occurs outside of self-defense or outside of defense of your property, any of those type of murders, should be automatically the death penalty. That we shouldn't have you know, lesser sentences or all these appeals or anything else. I believe in the way we did it in the old days. If you kill someone in cold blood and you're convicted of it, then they take you out and hang you right away. And if that's what Zimmerman did, I hope he fries. But I don't know if he did. You don't know if he did. A lot of you are assuming he did. He might have, but we don't know. Let's take the time to let it all come out in the wash and see what happened. And let's let justice be done accordingly. Let's not let the emotion sweep us away because that's what the left is counting on. The left is counting on people getting so emotional over this, understandably so, that they will then look upon this one particular situation as a mechanism to undo law that protects millions of people every single day. We cannot allow that to happen. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.